There are two kinds of people in this world. People who love leftovers and people who don't. You're watching Beyond the Trailer's review of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. What is that? Taco Dial Supreme. It's no picnic. Hold on, everyone. Ah, there's a leak in the boat. That is the biggest strawberry I've ever seen in my life. Uh -huh. ah! You scared the jelly out of him. <laughs> now, first off, let's all admit these are some old leftovers. Sony originally served us these meatballs back in 2009, but they were a hit. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs was Sony Animation's first tasty recipe, a far bigger box office hit than their first picks, Open Season and Surf's Up. And while Sony Animation has gotten a little better in the kitchen recently with the Smurfs and Hotel Transylvania, their first attempt at serving up leftovers didn't hit the spot. And they even used the same chef, director Raja Gosnell. As for Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2, it's up to the sous chefs as the original writer-directors Phil Lord and Chris Miller have gone on to pretty much open their own Hollywood restaurant, serving up hit after hit with 21 Jump Street and next year's highly anticipated Lego movie and 22 Jump Street. That leaves behind story artist Cody Cameron and head of story Chris Pern to take over as co-directors for the sequel, while Freaks and Geeks star turned screenwriter John Francis Daly and Horrible Bosses writer Jonathan Goldstein have stepped in to co-write an original idea, rather than the Pickles and Pittsburgh sequel dreamed up by children's authors Judy and Ron Barrett. And while the recipe might be a little different, the key ingredients are still the same. Bill Hader returns to voice inventor Flint Lockwood, and animation seems to be Hader's flavor of choice post-SNL, as he's also doing voices in Lord and Miller's Lego Movie, as well as Pixar's The Good Dinosaur and Inside Out. Meanwhile, while Hader has just left TV, his co-star Anna Faris is just starting out with her new CBS sitcom, Mom. There are other big-name voice talents here, too, but you know what? Every animated movie is serving up a semi-star-studded cast these days, and audiences seem to be getting tired of eating the same old thing. The Smurfs 2 wasn't this year's only box office disappointment. Turbo and Planes also got sent back to the kitchen. Will Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2 share the same fate? You just sat through a bunch of cooking puns. How will 95 minutes of food puns go down? I love Barry the Strawberry. He is so unbelievably adorable, and he came out of nowhere in this movie about a third of the way through. Up until that point, I wasn't sure how much I liked the film because the jokes weren't as good without uh, Lord and Miller. But when Barry showed up, and he was just so cute in every way, he, everything he did, the way he talked, the way his little hands moved, I mean, whoever animated him was a genius, and Cody Cameron, the co-director, did his voice, and he was just amazing, that, you know, from that point on, and the movie did get a lot better from that point, but Barry the Strawberry, I just think, epitomizes what works about this film. He was just so fantastic and adorable, I just loved him to pieces. And there's a gag early on in the film where they're talking about inventions. And someone says, oh, I invented a car that runs on cute. And the reason I bring it up is because I think this movie runs on cute. Because as I said, the jokes are a little bit less. Uh, I think it's a little bit, um, excuse, very young in the storyline. But the set design, the production design, and the character design is just so spectacular and inventive. Uh, as a fitting a movie with, uh, about an inventor, Flint Lockwood, but it was just so amazing and so high quality and better than most animated films. I think this even uh, surpasses a lot of the work that you know Disney and Pixar and DreamWorks do because it really was just so clever and gorgeous. And on that note, though, I have to say I really regret not seeing this movie in 3D. Uh, I had to go at a certain time. It was the 7:50 showing uh, at night, and so you would think that that would be in 3D prime showing time, but it wasn't. Uh, they're doing a new thing where they split, uh, they only have the movie in one theater and they split up the showtimes between 2D and 3D, which I think is, you know, a mistake because it doesn't give you a freedom of choice to, to do what you would want. Uh, so I, I was disappointed there was no 3D evening showtime. So I have to say, numerous times during the film I was like, oh, I can't believe I missed this in 3D. It's so amazing. Maybe, you know, I would consider even going to see it again in theaters in 3D because the visuals were just so spectacular. Uh, and the characters, the human characters are good, particularly uh, this new character, Chester V. I don't want to spoil anything about him, but I will tell you that he's voiced by Will Forte, who is unrecognizable in the role, but I really liked it. I thought that was a clever villain, and I thought he was a very modern uh, villain, very appropriate for our times, and I really liked the way he was handled. I thought he was 
great. But the stars, by far and away here, are the food animals. The food animals. They are just so well done, and uh, they never get old. You never get tired of them uh, in their adorableness and the way they're invented. And they, they, every time uh, you, you, a new scene in the movie comes along, you you meet a great new food animal, and you're like, I want that one, and I want that one. It actually kind of made me feel a little bit guilty about. Um, not being a vegetarian at some points in the movie. I was like, oh my goodness. But uh, this is so great. It's such a great move on Sony's part because I definitely think they have, they could easily make a TV series out of this. I would be, uh, watch it, or at least be tempted to watch it. Uh, but I know a lot of my sister loves this kind of stuff and I think she would definitely tune into this. I think you have a uh, SpongeBob SquarePants kind of thing going on here with Barry. Uh, and then I think that it would be great for merchandising. I, as, as I was watching the movie, not even after, I was like, where can I get myself a Barry the Strawberry? So that's kind of like going to be one of my tasks for the weekend. Uh, I really liked the film quite a bit. Uh, I highly recommend it. I think the beginning, as I said, the first third or maybe first quarter is a, is a little rocky, but just hang in there. You're going to have such a great time, and I highly recommend it in 3D. So that, and, oh, and get a snack. Like Wreck-It Ralph, this is a movie where you're going to feel really bad if you don't have some candy or something to enjoy while you're watching the movie, because uh, the food is so well realized. Even though they stick a face on it, it still looks super real. So that's my review of Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs 2. Be sure to leave your own thoughts down below. You can check out these other episodes right now.